welcome the students of class 8 welcome to our social science history class and today in this class we are going to discuss the another subunit of your history book and the name of the subunit is girls begin going to school okay and it's present in your page number 112 and the chapter number 9 it is from chapter number 9 from your old NCRT book 2 and those have new NCRT book they can also open it is in page number it is in chapter number 8 so let's begin what today's class that in previous class I have already discussed about the reformers of India like Jyoti, uh, like the Raja Ram Mohan Roy and Birshalingam Pantulu as well as Swami Dayanand Saraswati those uh, reformers have established some organization such as the Brahmo Samaj by Raja Ramohan Roy as well as, as well as Arya Samaj by Swami Dayanand Saraswati and uh, some widow remarriage association uh, for that was established by Virshalingam Pantulu. Now today we are going to discuss about the Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar and the what is the what was the role of Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar in the reformation of our society that Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar was born in Medinipur in West Bengal and uh, he was a professor of Sanskrit and in Calcutta he was was uh, established many schools for the girls and in Bombay also following the footsteps of Vidya Sagar they set up schools for girls so when the first schools were opened in mid 19th century many of the people many people they feared that these schools prevent girls from doing their domestic duties and they had to travel through pu public uh, places and it would have a corrupting influence in their life so these are some initial uh, possibilities that was uh, that's why the people conservative people at the time in the society they are not ready to send their girls to the school but by the 19th century most educated most educated women were taught at home by their liberal fathers and husbands and some of them uh, secretly learned to read and write in the flickering light of candles at night such as Rashundari Devi I have already learned about Rashundari Devi in class 7 civics book now in the second part of the century second part of the 19th century the schools also set up for girls with the initiative of by the initiative of Arya Samaj in Punjab and also Jyoti Rao Phule in Maharashtra so these two eminent personalities also opened many schools for girls education and in the in the same time the aristocratic Muslim households in North Indian North India where women learned to read the Quran the holy texts of the Muslims as well as the Arabic and uh, some and uh, these subjects were taught by some women who came home to teach them so in this way the education also introduced in the Muslim society and some reformers such as Mumtaz Ali reinterpreted verses from the Quran to argue that women's education is not illegal in Islam and the first Urdu novels began to be written from the 19th century among other things these are meant to encourage women to read about the religion and domestic management in a language that they could understand so in this way the women education started in India with the help of some reformers and the next part there is a women write about the women so this portion is not a part of your syllabus 
Okay, so I'm just mentioning the important points from this subunit that the first uh, schools that were established that is the Hindu Mahila Vidyalaya, 1875. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, earliest girls' schools in Kolkata and established at the time Calcutta, established by the Bhogini Nivedita or uh, the Bhogini Nivedita. You know that he was a saint and he was just taken. Uh, Hindu uh, accept the Hinduism and culture and uh, he also established many schools in Calcutta also for the girls. On the other, uh, on the other people who worked on the girls education they are Begum Rokya Sakhawat Hosen and Begum Rokya Sakhawat Hosen started school for Muslim girls in Patna and Calcutta. Another woman that is uh, Tarawai Shinde, Tarawai Shinde, a woman educated at home at Pune. He also, uh, she also published a book, Sri Purush Tulana, a comparison between women and men, and criticizing the social differences between the men and women. And Pandita Ramabai, a great scholar of Sanskrit, also felt that the Hinduism was oppressive towards women and wrote a book about the miserable lives of the upper caste Hindu women. So these are some and uh, at that, at that uh, time some nationalists also they believed that they also came up to support the female education and uh, from the early 20th century they formed political pressure groups to push through laws for female suffrage after better health care and education for women and some of them joined various kinds of nationalist and socialist movements from the 1920s okay students so this is the this is the story of girls education how girls education began in india so that's all from today's class so i'm finishing it today so next class we will going to discuss the caste and social reform so thank you for watching bye